Hi everyone, Yevi here with the Inkdwell, and today, instead of doing the ink review that we had planned, we're going to go ahead and follow the bandwagon and do a pen cleaning, uh, I guess, kind of how-to slash tutorial slash how I decide to do things, which is probably not how you do it, but I figure, you know, having multiple options out there is always a good thing. So before we get started, these are the three pens we're going to work with. Awami Safari, a Pilot P381, and a Platinum Plazier. Now, this one's going to be refilled, and this one and this one are being put back, I believe. Actually, wait, no. I'm also going to be filling the Lamy because I do need a medium nib. No, never mind. Yeah, it's getting put up too. So before we get started, let's get these pens out of the way and away from the sink and move the cutting board. And anytime you're cleaning pens near your kitchen sink, put in a strainer. Don't make the same mistake I did and leave an open sink where things can go in. That's never good. And always make sure the holes on your strainer are smaller than the smallest piece in your fountain pen. That way you don't accidentally lose anything anyways. So the supplies we're going to need for this are a fountain pen, Q-tips, paper towel, pen flush, bulb filler, a syringe, a shot glass, a measuring cup, and a random glass. So let's go ahead and get everything set up here. There we have the random glass, there we have the measuring cup, and there we have our shot glass. Let's go ahead and take our pen flush. And get a good healthy amount of pen flush in there, about half a shot glass full. Next, go ahead and fill the first glass with regular clean water. And then cycle it out. And here's where the rest of the video is going to be slightly noisy, but that's okay. So for the rest of the video, what I like to do when I'm cleaning is have the measuring cup run at a, a good pace. And that's kind of for two reasons. I like doing a continuous flush. And we use gray water recycling here for our kitchen faucets. So I know it's going to end up coming back anyway, so I'm okay with that. Now, first things first, let's go ahead and take a look at what we need to clean. Now, my pens get tossed around a lot, so there's probably some ink in the cap. What I like to do is take the cap off the pen, run it under the sink, cap it with my finger, and just shake it. You could use an ultrasonic cleaner, but I don't have one. So this works just as good. And then go ahead and dump it. See, just doing that was enough to loosen up the ink. And once I've done that a couple times, and I've gotten it to my liking, then I go ahead and bring the syringe in. And here's why. The needle that you have on this syringe gives you a lot of pressure. So you go ahead and fill the syringe. Get it up into the cap. Angle the cap to where it's pointed downward and just squeeze. And repeat the process. And just squeeze. One more time. 
Ah, uh, there was still enough blue to make me want to do that again. Now you're probably wondering why I decided to start with the P381. Well, because it's got Athena Eternal Blue in it, and that ink is notoriously cranky when it comes to being removed. So let's see how much we have left. Break out the Q-tip. Okay. So we can kind of see where the ink is actually building up. So here's where we're going to take it one step further. We're going to take the syringe. Get a small bit of pen flush. Our water that's been sitting here for a little bit, bring it up a little bit more. And then inject some of that into the cap. Give it a good shake. Okay, it's looking pretty good. And then we go back to rinsing as before. Now, most people wouldn't think to clean their caps, but like I said, I'm kind of rough on my pens, so I know from experience the ink gets everywhere. Okay. We're gonna go back to the Q-tip and see if it's, if it's within my personal tolerance. Okay. So now for the final bit, because that's, that's honestly within my tolerance. We go ahead and stick paper towel in there, and we rotate until it's clean. All right, now one last Q-tip run. Look at that. Perfectly clean without an ultrasonic cleaner. So the other thing, we went ahead and took the paper towel and we dried the outside. Once you're done cleaning it, don't let it sit in water. Go ahead and just dry it off immediately. Set it off to the side away from the sink. And then let's go ahead and get the rest of the pen. Now, this is a cartridge converter, and I've got the converter in it. So the body's not gonna have anything in there that we need to clean out. We can set it to the side, no need to clean it. Next thing I go ahead and do is I go ahead and remove the converter from the pen, and I take the nib, and I immediately put it in our circulating water. Then I go ahead and empty the converter down the sink. And I go ahead and do a couple flushes in the running water. Now, as you can see, there was still quite a bit of blue in there, but here's what I like to do with converters. I go ahead and back it all the way up. Then I go ahead and take the syringe and top it off from the clean water. 
very carefully, get the syringe into the converter, and flush the converter with the syringe. Now, I go ahead, empty out the converter. And do two fills with pen flush. And then we go back into the running water. And the one thing I like to do, sorry about that. The one thing I like to do is open it up and then just rotate. That's looking pretty clean. I'm not seeing any residue from the Athena Eternal Blue. Now, if there was any more residue in there, normally uh, I would see if the converter unscrews. This one doesn't, uh, the Pelican one doesn't. Most of mine do. That one just doesn't. So next thing I go ahead and do is just shake it out and then I go ahead and grab a paper towel, put it tip down onto the paper towel and run it in and out a few times. There we go. And now, there's so little moisture in that converter. Yeah, just had to double check. There's like virtually no moisture in there. So I feel confident actually filling that back up with ink. So let's go ahead and set that aside and go ahead and give it a wipe down. That way it's completely dry. Now for the fun part. So we go ahead and reach into the cup and grab the nib. By this point, it's had a good soak. So what we go ahead and do is we grab our bulb filler. Use that to go ahead and Make sure whatever I see here is just from the nib itself. Load up with some water. And squeeze out. And keeping it in the nib, let it refill with air. That way it actually draws through the nib. Now, here's where I like to see whether or not it actually finished the job. So let's take a look at our paper towel from the converter. There's no blue on it. So we're gonna go ahead, set the nib in here like so. Gently hold like that. Make sure our bulb syringe is empty. Place it in. And go ahead and give it a couple squeezes while the nib is in the paper towel. This does two things. By drawing dry air in through the paper towel into the nib, it's forcing the feed to air dry. And then you're pressurizing the feed using the bulb syringe. So we still had a little bit of blue there. So now here's where I get to decide. Do I wanna pull the nib? Or do I wanna go ahead and run a little bit more liquid through it and try to clean it that way? In this case, we're gonna go ahead and run liquid through it. And as you can see, I'm running the water through it quite aggressively there.
Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and use a different piece of paper towel. And already this is a good sign. Yeah, that's already a really good sign. So we're gonna go ahead, grip the nib. And then I go ahead and do this a few times. And there you go. That's where the nib was. No ink. So we go ahead, dry it off. There we go. Nib's good to go. So here's what we're gonna go ahead and do. I'm gonna show you how I fill this one really quick. And then we're gonna go ahead and show you why cleaning that one pen took so long. So give me one second, I'm gonna grab the bottle of ink. Okay, so for the Pelican, we're putting in the Pilot of Roshizuku Inoha. Inoho. I'm never gonna say it right. So we go ahead, set the ink off to the side of the sink. We go ahead and take our syringe. Run it a few times. Now, making sure that there's no moisture in the syringe itself, which is good. And we're gonna go ahead and draw a converter full of ink. We're gonna take our newly cleaned Pelican converter and we're gonna carefully fill the converter. And then whatever's left, because we cleaned the syringe before we filled it, can go right back into the bottle. That does two things. It prevents ink contamination from one pen to another, and it allows you to get the most out of your ink. Also, when I fill, I fill right up to the collar. I don't go, let me get that in focus. I fill it right up to the collar. I don't go past, I just fill it right up to the metal collar. That way, when I go to put the pen back together, I don't get any leakage. And then we go ahead. Reassemble the pen. So you may be asking yourself, Okay, why is he showing us how to clean his pens if it takes him that long? Well, that was to clean Athena Eternal Blue out of a pen that has had that ink in it for the better part of, oh, three and a half months now. So that converter probably could have had some staining, and I wanted to go with the hardest ink first. The other thing, I don't clean one pen at a time. So normally the reason I have all these here is because when I'm cleaning... Caps go there. Converters go there. Bodies go off to the side. Nibs go in there. Noticing a theme? So I've actually got like five or six pens going on at once. And I go step by step. That way it's not taking so much time.
And you know, while we're here, we'll show you something interesting. So let's say you do like me, and you order yourself a Lamy Safari. But you forget to order yourself a Lamy converter. So you take your you take your cartridge that comes with the Lamy, and normally it's just standard blue ink. Fill your syringe with water. And go. And you go ahead and do this a couple times. All right, one more, as you can tell, I've already got it pretty clean, so one more good squirt should do it. Okay. So, now, you have a Lamy cartridge that has been de-inked, and you go ahead, take your syringe, stick it back in the cartridge, because there, now there's water in there. And you go ahead, draw as much of the water out as you can. And then just shake the rest out. Hmm, just a little bit more blue in there, so I'm gonna give it one more. and one of pen flush for good measure. All right, there we go. Any residual pen flush, just get that cleaned off. Shake it out a couple times. Grab a fresh paper towel. And just go ahead, wipe down your cartridge. There we go. And this one is also going to be filled with Inaho because of the ink review I'm going to be doing next week. So I'm going to wait to fill this back up, but you do the same thing. You just use the syringe, you put it in the ink, and then you fill this with it, and then you just pop it back in. And that's how you reuse your Lamy cartridge to fill with whatever fountain pen ink that you want to. It's a very good cartridge, and it's very reusable as long as you don't, like, do something stupid and damage it or squeeze it or, you know, whatever the case may be. Well, you guys have been amazing. Thank you for watching me clean one pen and show you what I would normally do. Because right now you can see these have been agitated quite a bit. And normally, by now, I start with my converters. Once I'm done with all my converters, which doesn't really take that long when you bulk do them like this, then I go through, do all my nibs, then I go through, do all my caps, and then I go ahead and run pen flush through anything that's stubborn. And the only reason I did the cap first was because I wanted to show you how bad Athena Eternal Blue could actually stick in the cap, which I think we got that across. But thank you for joining me. Um, if you want to buy the pen flush, the syringe, or the bulb filler, head on over to penchlay.com. While you're there, click on the radio podcast link at the top of the page and enter in Inkdwell in the How You Heard About Us section. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at the Inkdwell or theinkdwell.com or floor3media.com slash theinkdwell. You guys have been amazing. See you next time.